we are a group. I'm a person with some other people, and we're blathering at you from somewhere. Now, this show is sponsored by some sort of organization, one that supposedly stands for something, and I guess does stuff. You can learn more about it by calling its voicemail or visiting its website. Just be aware it broadcasts on certain days of the month at specific times. It even has a chat room. So, here you go. All right, we certainly do stuff. (laughs) I, we do stuff, and for, 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 That's today right. we might break the record for shortest Dennis Indeed, intro. That was yes. the shortest intro. That was so abrupt. totally ambiguous and yeah. completely uninformative. Yes, that was so abrupt. I just jumped in there, <laughs> like oh, yeah. D- well, dead in, air. In reality, mm, yeah. let's Kill see. That dead air. It is. Uh, I'm Dennis Lube, along with Jamie Boone and Kevin Stein. Oh, there you go. And uh, we're coming to you from the Free Thought Library in Austin, Texas on the 1st of December, 2019. Hmm. And we're sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin. Mm -hmm. It is an organization, a nonprofit educational organization for the promotion of positive atheism and the separation of church and state. If you want to learn more about the ACA, Mm -hmm. you can call their voicemail at 512-220-6561 or visit their website at www.atheist-community.org. Nonprofits broadcasts every first and third Sunday of each month from 3 to 4.30 Central Time. You can join the Nonprofits chat room by following the directions at www.nonprofitsradio.com. There we go. I mean, I, now I feel bad, like we yeah. guilt-tripped you into doing another <laughs> intro. <laughs> well, like, yeah, but uh, I, I, I felt, yeah, the first intro would supply no information, so <laughs> I would well, have to supply it afterwards. Uh, mm. And of course, we'll have to pre uh, uh, deal with the uh, outro, which is likewise completely oh. <laughs> information free. That's okay. Well, it's always uh, good to have a little fun sometimes. Yeah, and then get back to work. No. So, uh, how was how was y'all's Thanksgiving? Just fine. Yeah, yeah. we went out and ate, mm-hmm. and. Uh, yeah, it was all good. Mm. That's good. Jamie? A few of my family's Thanksgiving traditions, or at least what I had always experienced as my family's Thanksgiving traditions, were subtly questioned and tested this year <laughs> um, by well-meaning uh, siblings and parents and relatives of mine. Um, uh-huh. So... A, an effort was taken that was largely successful to avoid discussion of the more mm. incendiary aspects of politics. Very lawyer speak they're using right now. Yeah, they avoided talking about the impeachment okay. entirely. That's impressive. Okay. It's impressive, doubly so. If you're aware of any other time, I've talked about Thanksgiving with my family. That's what it is, right? Mm -hmm. I figured, okay, you know, they're going to avoid religion because everyone knows I'm an atheist. Right. Um, And, you know, my mom is the opposite. So um, uh, about about the same, not quite my degree of atheism matches like her degree of Christian-y-ness. You don't completely cancel each other out? No, no, no. I think on the whole, on average, my family is probably m- trends religious more. It used to be even, mm-hmm. and then they, they, they. Actually, I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't crunched the numbers because I don't know uh, that that's possible. But yeah, and then they were talking about like, oh, maybe we should make less food next time. And I'm like, what? My <laughs> okay, my dad has prepared enough food for everyone to eat two meals. Or at least it seemed like it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I was a kid. Every every year, that what uh, the idea that Thanksgiving was anything but arguing about politics after having eaten too much turkey, so that everyone was calm and sleepy. I what uh, what is this holiday? It's like I stepped into a Christian home, and the, it would be as weird as if they were like, "Oh, thank you for Jesus's turkey," as prophesied in Daniel. Like uh, what? Uh, so in some ways, it was a failure. And in other ways, I got to hang out with my nieces and nephews, and that was fun. Hmm. So, All right. So, it, I mean, it was good on the whole then. Yeah, I mean, it's always good on the whole. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. Were there turkeys in the old world? I'm curious. 
Turkeys are an American yeah, bird. American I feel like it depends thing. on how far back you turn the clock. So Jesus couldn't turkeys have driven an the bird. Jesus couldn't have driven the evil spirits into the turkeys and had them run off the cliff or run into the sea and drown or whatever it was. No, but that's actually that's a pretty good thing. I don't know. Mm. Turkeys being like the a new Christian type of scapegoat where it's like all your mm-hmm. sin goes in here. Thank you for forgiveness while we eat turkey. Yeah, they call I feel like I should give them ideas. Dumb, but the wild turkeys are pretty smart. Are they? I encountered one in our neighborhood one time. Uh, and it beat you in a ago. game of chess. It beat me in a game of chess. <laughs> no, uh, well, sort of. Uh, I approached it <laughs> and it put a bush in between us. And so I started to walk around the bush and it Maneuvered so the bush remained between us. Like a Looney Tunes like, uh, cartoon. Okay, there's absolutely no way to. <laughs> right. it no way to approach the turkey. It was cleverly. Yeah. It moved so that there was. It a bush moved there. so the I, bush remained I, I, between us. It, it knew that amazing. it was neither duck season nor rabbit. Season. Yes. <laughs> okay. It decided to act on that. Yeah. Huh. I don't think that it knew that it was. It's. You don't know that. <laughs> Were you there? All right. Uh, oh, my God. Someone <laughs> play the, the clip that just says, fucking prove it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking prove it. There it is. Yes. I'm sorry. What is your claim about uh, turkeys? Because you should. Oh, no. they left me hanging because I always take too much time. Uh, well, that's uh, your fault. So how was your Thanksgiving? Yeah. Uh, it was uneventful. Um, that can be construed as good. Yeah. It, it was about as good as, as it could have been. I decided about a month and a half ago that um, I was going to stay home. I wasn't going to go through the trouble of going up to see my family. And that was good because um, Wednesday, actually, one of my dogs, um, he had to be put down. Oh, man. And I... Sorry. Yeah. um, I literally... Had to bury him Wednesday morning. Oh. So, oh. yeah. Um, Sorry to hear that. Yeah, my my girlfriend and I have been kind of reclusive for, uh-huh. the, for the past couple of days. So, uh-huh. um, I can yeah. completely well, understand that. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's a good thing that we didn't have plans to go, you know, be drive around family. and see family because right. mm-hmm. we didn't we didn't want to be around people. No, right. no, yeah. lost a family member. Uh, yeah. yeah, he was uh, eleven years old. Oh, jeez. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Mm. I can't even imagine. Yeah. It's not so, I mean, it, fun yeah, it's too. been rough, yeah. but... Uh, yeah. Mm. Here I am. Well, if you want company at any time, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. Or if you want to be alone, I can also yeah. <laughs> help with that. that. That's been the theme for the past few days, but uh, yeah. Right. On a lighter note, right. I... Yes. I came up with a question, uh, mm. I don't want to say last week. Uh-huh. You guys mm. want to hear? Yeah. Yes. Okay. What is seg- segment one? Spit it out. Okay. Kevin so, has a question. I, I hope it's good. So, um, I don't know if you guys had ever heard the, uh, the old adage of like, you know, when you're a child, uh, equ- equating faith. To childhood versus adulthood. Right. When you're a child, yes. you know, you're you're small and it's easy to fill you up with faith. And when you're an adult and you're bigger, it's harder to fill you up with faith, which is, I mean... Okay, I hadn't uh, heard that specifically, but okay. I, I remember it from my childhood. I totally believe you do. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I don't remember it from mine, but mine yeah. was different. I, this prompts so many questions and objections. <laughs> okay, get, so, what is yeah. your, what what, is your what, question? What is, so, um, it was about, you know, like innocence and all that. Mm-hmm. And my, my thought was, does innocence negate faith? Like, can what, mm. can what a child possesses be called faith? Because it, at some point that's just really credulity. Yeah. Well, it seems like the whole... I think you could deal argue. is forcing you to make a decision based on no information <laughs> which which children have children have no information right. I've learned this I've 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 worked with them. Yeah. Um 
I feel like someone could object and say, it's not credulity, it's openness to faith. Yes. To which you could reply, yes, those are the same thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you wanted to be snippy. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to, where do you draw that line? Because, uh, you know, you've heard, where does short end and tall begin? Or whatever. Well, presumably it's a sliding you right. scale. Yeah. I was going to say, I... Uh, it's, Where is that it's, line? It's, is it is it blurred for everyone based on you know their cognitive faculties or so with with something like this, I would expect to hear something like this outside of a religious context, mm. like as a joke in the form of a metaphor from like a friend of mine <laughs> after we'd both had like a beer or something. I was getting yeah, bizarrely so, specific. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, whatever. On a Thursday uh, at at. <laughs> 6.52 p.m. No. Um, you guys eat? What are you drinking? Oh, I don't know. Something cheap. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> why? Do you want to come over and, and talk uh, <laughs> uh, joking metaphors? Uh, that offer is uh, sincere. So, although as long as we don't limit our conversation to weird metaphors like like children are right. easier to fill with faith because they're smaller. Oh, My question is, faith. so I would normally expect <sighs> this to be a also, metaphor. Also, little people exist, so fuck you. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. So you know all, what, all little people are uh, Jesus. Um, and we so, know what "fill with faith" means. <laughs> bullshit. I mean, uh, it, I, it, it, indoctrination. Yeah, but I mean, so normally I would expect this to be metaphorical, but mm. there's almost no such thing when you become a Christian fundamentalist. Everything is literal, right? So. Do they literally? Would it would it literally follow that faith requires physical space? Mm. Like, is it just is it just that a child's brain is smaller? Is it height? <laughs> Does oh. weight matter? <laughs> are are uh, is it harder to fill a really really fat person with faith because they're a larger person? There is nothing wrong with that. In fact, if being fat helps shield you from faith, I encourage it. Well, uh, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's the a jokes. slightly larger <laughs> question. Is faith just the glorification of ignorance? I mean, because it I mean, seems to be. Yeah, I think and it depends on who you ask. It, yeah, it also depends <laughs> on... Yeah, yeah, obviously. Uh, it depends on the, the definition of faith that you want to go over. Right. And, you know, I've heard a lot of definitions, but I think for the sake of simplicity we could go with just the biblical definition uh, the belief right. in things unseen unseen blah, right blah, blah, blah. that means you're ignorant of a thing and you call it faith not confirmed it's something uh, like that. yeah uh, or it's, you get everybody basically it's weird yeah it's isaiah something 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 i could google it but this crapped out on us yeah, the push-up. innocence of a child well oh, yeah, they're well, malleable <laughs> That's why say, well, it's so easy. Well, I was going to say, well, uh. so uh, having recently read, uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, Stephen Hassan's uh, The Cult of Trump and starting to look at how cult leaders form, you'd be surprised how malleable adults can be as Oh, well, yeah, that's true. With yeah, the right that's circumstances. absolutely yeah. true. Um, yeah, they could be persuaded to, you know, vote in an election for a ridiculous candidate for no reason. But, yeah, that's an interesting question. Like, yeah, I, I feel like it kind of opens it up to um, it, what exactly faith, faith, just faith in general, if you cannot determine really where faith begins and credulity ends, then what the hell is faith exactly? Right. And because it's impossible it's to draw well, that line. Then they it's say pattern of believing just because it's faith seems really important to the whole religion thing. I mean, mm-hmm. if you don't have faith, then uh, if someone was, if it was proven to someone that God exists, right, with with evidence and logic, you know, it was inescapable to come to the conclusion that that God exists. The evidence was compelling. The the arguments were 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 great, mm-hmm. and you did it. They would accept that God exists without faith. Yeah, they would they would believe in God like they believe in the chair they're sitting in. They would sit on God. They would sit on God. No, but <laughs> and so 
But apparently, according to Christians and religious people, that's not the kind of believer that God wants. No. So, well, it's, so it's it depends weird. on who you ask. Is because a, a person will say, "Oh, well, the reason there isn't clear evidence is that you, God wants you to have faith." That denies faith. So it denies free will. It, yeah, yeah, God well, requires. They'll say, right. they'll say free will, but there are some that will say, "Oh, it requires faith. You have to have faith." You have and to that's have why faith. there's no yeah. evidence. And then sometimes people that will hold that position will also go, but see, can't you see the evidence? I know, I know, it's, it's sort of, crazy. It's, it's like, like arguing with someone at a party. Apparently all of my allusions are going to be to people that are drinking. Um, <laughs> it's like arguing with someone at a party that's trying to persuade you of a thing and they're just randomly thinking of any excuse or reason right. that they can, whatever, almost like it's a party game. Um, and they're slurring their words and maybe they're stumbling, but they're certain about their position. The only difference between that and faith is that faith, you know it's about a god and you speak more nonsense when you babble in tongues. Yeah. So I don't... If they try to convince me that God exists and they succeed, then I'm the kind of believer that God doesn't want. They're working cross-purposes to their God. It, it, they should pray on it. Why? Their yeah. arguments should only be... You know, because I have faith. Yeah. There should be no logic to it or anything. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't yeah. even try. You should balk at the evidence uh, or, or balk, balk at the... Uh, balk. balk. Thank you. <laughs> the uh -huh. idea of looking for evidence yeah. at mm -hmm. all. Yeah. 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 And isn't looking for evidence putting their God to the test? I mean, I, that, I mean that's what I've what heard. What the from hell are they trying to do? <laughs> well, they're they're trying to fulfill their obligation under First Peter three fifteen and find a reason for the joy that they have found. Uh, they're ready God. to present it. Are they trying to convince themselves rather than other people? Is that it? I think in both cases, whichever choices they choose from the big book of multiple choice, right. uh, there there is a self reassurance. It's when in doubt, it's shout is a is a book that I've been weird. able to get to. Hmm. Yeah, but I keep reading things about politics in America and we're doomed. So, Well, that sounds well, depressing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, was a, that was a good was question. Like, that is a really Thank good you. question. I appreciate Where did, it. This, this an, uh, yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to, I might Google that afterwards and just be like, what the fuck? Like, presumably that's that's been at least a section in some preacher's the difference Sermon. between faith and credulity? No, no, I mean, I'm, <laughs> oh. no, no, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm still stuck on. It's easier to fill children with faith yeah. because they're smaller. Gross. I was sort of like in a lot of ways, but like yeah. if you said, ah, yeah. oh, children, Phrasing. like like yeah. you know, children are like a highball glass, and adults are like a pint, uh, and so there's that. But if you mean it, like you know, I was gonna say, okay, well. Is God a mixed drink? What vintage is God? <laughs> is, it, is it beer? Uh, is God hmm. beer? Is that how that... Opium? Know? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you fill a glass with opium? Opium of the masses. I... You don't drink opium. Well, I mean... I mean, I hope you're not drinking... I'm pretty sure... Well, you drink okay. the marijuanas, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Or have they been doing it well, wrong? Well, sir, I, I can assure you that I do not drink marijuana. <laughs> Harumph. Been smoking them drugs. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Been smoking them alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you reminded me of an email we got because you corrected my pronunciation, and it's a good thing you did. Otherwise, we might have gotten an email about it. <laughs> do you have the email about yes. Jamie's pronunciation? I yes, I oh, do. Yeah. I was going to say, you mean my Bulk. pronunciation? Now, long yeah, ago, yeah, yeah. there was a movie called E.T. damn it. <laughs> I, and this I has nothing it. to do with that movie. I, um, I got him again because he said pronounce, <laughs> or, uh, pronunciations. Oh, I am not on... The, the title line. of the message is, it is et cetera, not ek. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, Jamie. This again. I was gonna say, okay, I don't do it halfway. Go all the way to et cetera, or deal <laughs> with the fact that neither of us is pronouncing it in in the language of its origin, which is Latin. Right. I'm sorry. And who is now that just from? Just watch the King and I six times in a row, and you should have it. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Who, who's that from? It's a. It's the King and I. No, no, the email. Oh, uh, it is from 
Dr. Tom. Well, thank you, Dr. Tom. I diagnose you with From a case ground of control not salute. being technically correct. <laughs> so uh, don't worry, it's a very common ailment and doesn't seem to stop people. Yeah. Well yeah, done, but no, Jamie. thank you. It's well not done. et cetera in the same way that it's not espresso. And it is not right. And it's it is not, not espresso. espresso. <laughs> it is not Bach either. It's bulk. I feel like it could be either with that one. Like I, there's some of them where it's like, oh, don't take it for uh, granite as opposed to don't take it for granted. And it's sort of like everyone knows yes. what you mean, but it sounds uh, the wrong way, right? But I feel like you could you could Bach at something, and it would it would mean that you just. In response to something you didn't believe? <laughs> something, yes. The next time someone says, like, you know, oh, the the polls are showing that, you know, Andrew Yang is going to be the nominee for the Democratic primary, I'm just going to go, like, I, I balk <laughs> at your assertion, sir, for that is how preposterous it is. It's funny. I um, I mean, obviously, obviously I said y'all earlier because mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Texas, but I also used to say I, I would pronounce both with an L. For the longest time. Both? Yeah. Oh, Both. Huh. interesting. And I spelled it that way for a long time, too. Huh. Some yeah. people pronounce the T in often. Often. Oh. I don't know if that's correct or not, or if it's British or what, but anyway. Mm. I mean... How do you say it, Mid-Atlantic? <laughs> Mid-Atlantic? With the Mid-Atlantic I think accent, you say it with yeah. semaphore flags. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> a strange Mid-Atlantic Oh, my accent. God. I, All right. I have never wanted to have a joke edited out of a show. <laughs> That's not true. I probably have. Do we, you want to move into our first... Um, yeah. First story. Yeah, we actually have an audio clip that Tell was provided story. by... Uh, we, Fentress. Tracy Fentress uh, emailed... Wasn't actually nonprofits. They emailed um, just the ACA in general. Ah. We get those too. But email the nonprofits. Right. Cool. That would be better. Yeah. If you it's, email just the TV one, put nonprofits in the subject line. Yeah, it'll be easier it. to find it. But we got a, a clip from Catholic Answers Live, which was a, uh, a Catholic mm -hmm. um, call in show. Okay. It's a little rough. Mm. Okay. Um, do we have that queued up? Roll the clip. Do you mean the pedophilia scandal or. Yes. So if yes. someone comes in and says, I'm a pedophile and I did this and I, I'm sorry and I want to be forgiven, why should the priest keep that person secret? Yes. Okay. Um, because that person wouldn't confess and wouldn't reconcile himself with God if he knew he was going to be immediately reported to the police. Um, the church recognizes that the highest good and its mission is to reconcile souls with God so that they can go to heaven. That's the church's chief mission. And anything that would interfere with the church's ability to reconcile souls to God is something that the church has to disregard because Jesus... It's not something that the church has to disregard. Wow. I would love if that was their answer, is like we will disregard the law as opposed to we will make sure to change the law so that it suits us. Because that was my response. It's like, okay, well, if your parishioners are, are faithful, certainly hell is more frightening than prison. Um, uh, it's not to me. It's the other way around. But because um, I don't fear hell. But y y uh, disregard would be nice. I was sort of wondering as soon as he got to that point in the sentence what oh. verb he was going to use because it was it's something that the church must control, dominate, lobby, yeah. change must be eliminated, removed. And I'm sort of like, okay, well, what is the purpose of civil government? You know, the thing of this world for this world. To protect parts of this world. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it really kind of boils down to defending uh, an idea above the yeah. people that are, you know, damaged by that idea. And, and I guess the, you know, the, the church that is built around that idea Mm -hmm. more directly, but... They imagine themselves above the law? They, they, they respond to a higher law. Mm. It just so yep, happens that being higher than law. something means that you're above it. Yep. So there's that. Mm. They serve two masters. Yeah. Um, well, there's 
their book tells them just to serve the one. Mm-hmm. Which is disconcerting. So, yeah, that's kind of how can we trust them? Yeah. Yeah, so this was, um, we, we have more, but this was about specifically the... Um, oh, there's a, there's a legislation, isn't there? No, but we, we talked about this not that long ago. It, it was the, the, the confessional yeah, yeah. Uh, stuff. Yeah, privilege. And, yeah, we'll, we'll let it keep going. Yeah, let's roll some more. Church has to disregard because Jesus sent um, the disciples to preach repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And part of that was the sacrament of confession. We see that right real, real clearly in John chapter 20. Whosoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whosoever sins you forgive, they are, whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. He gave the uh, disciples the ability to forgive and retain sins. That means the disciples need to know about those sins and whether we're repentant for them. That means we need to confess them. That means uh, they need to hear about them. And so consequently, um, as a, the ordinary process of bringing souls to God, part of that involves the sacrament of confession. And the church therefore needs to take seriously what, is, what needs to happen in order for people to come to confession. And what the church discerned over the course of centuries is that in order to effectively get people to repent and come and confess their sins the way Christ wants them to, they need to be guaranteed that they're not going to be ratted out to anybody else. Wow. Sorry, his claim is that over the course of centuries, the, the church realized, oh, we should not report confess sins to the civil authority. This, right. this suggests to me that at some point it was their policy to do that for, I don't know, a number of years between 50 and 100, if you want to talk about being able to yeah. discern what is accurate over the zone. Uh, additionally, um, uh, to my knowledge, this isn't like a church official. This is just a Catholic oh, guy. Oh, just a guy talking. The Catholic yeah. answers live. Uh, I'm not too familiar I mean, with that. But isn't that show? But, isn't this abject cowardice? I mean, uh, if the only way you will confess to a thing is if there are no consequences. Yeah, that's. Slimy. I mean, that's that's pretty lame. Yeah. Well, they they want to be forgiven for without, sin. Yeah. And and without being subject to criminal penalties, <sighs> because they don't want society to be society and they don't they don't want to be responsible for their actions. Not on earth. Yeah. They want to make sure that when they get to heaven and are going to be held responsible, that they've dotted all they've dotted all their right. i's and crossed all their t's. But here on earth, they're going to avoid. Uh, authority and life, and here on earth, the institution that is the Catholic Church appears to be less interested in civil harmony, uh, peace, and, and so, non-raped children. How can we trust they, them on this earth? Well, I mean, when their beliefs say they don't give a crap. Yeah, I think the idea of cosmic justice allows for yeah. greater real injustice in yeah. you know in, in yeah. this world. It creates a kind of moral dependency. So it's instead of solving problems Ooh, between ourselves crazy. here, we'll just depend on God to figure it out. Right. It's like the bystander effect. Yeah, kind of. It's like everybody well, thinks, oh, well, I mean, somebody, el somebody else will call 911. I don't right. have to. Yeah. I can just record this on my phone or something. Somebody else is going to punish sins. We don't yeah. have to. I'm irres yeah, yeah, I don't have to be responsible. Yeah. <sighs> It's like, oh, well, I'll get my comeuppance in heaven, so there's no reason for me to be subject to civil law here. Additionally, the phrase ratted out is yeah. kind of... <laughs> I, I feel like that is a little bit uh, kind of showing your hand there. Yeah. It's, it's certainly showing your sentiment. Yeah, it, you, you know, don't snitches get stitches. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, snitches get like, stitches when they're sent to hell. That's right. Yeah, I feel like uh, there's really no sympathy uh, for any of the victims that oh, this yeah, guy none. is, you know, feeling or harboring at all. Yeah. He is really more concerned with what he is saying is the greater goal, which is you know saving people's souls, which is you know, yeah. I mean, that is completely immaterial and 
oh, I taken see. entirely on faith slash credulity. Yeah. I mean, you know, to be fair to this person and to religious people, they're not acting hypocritically. I mean, that's not a lot of credit when children are getting raped and you're on the wrong side of controversies right. related to that. In fact, it's all but immaterial. But it's consistent with what is believed. Is like, I don't know, the existence and prosperity and strength of the church is good and things that get in the way of that are bad. And the ability to have nothing impact uh, souls, Christ, Jesus, forgiveness uh, is good and anything that gets in the way of that is bad, right? It's just at a certain point when that is valued so much more than uh, not just civic authority, but life, society, the other human beings living here, you have to ask yourself, what is the effect of this ideology? What is the effect of this institution? Yeah, yeah. which is why we attack the ideas and not the people yeah. generally. I mean, we've made fun of some people specifically, but it's not really the ideas that they hold that we find to be damaging and, and repugnant. Yeah, that's true. Also, They're the ones that presume to instruct us on morality. Yeah. Can't say that enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You really can't. I was going to say, well, you know, they may be raping children, but I've used a condom, so who's really going to hell? <laughs> Me. Yeah. Me. According to Damn. Catholic doctrine, I am, and child rapists are not. Right. For all eternity. And depending... Many of their victims will. In fact, by Catholic ideology, when you consider the actions, forgiveness, and treatment of priests in the afterlife, a higher proportion of their victims are damned to hell by their their doctrine yeah. than are the perpetrators. I wonder why people get upset and angry when they're not restrained by societal sentiments about not criticizing religion. Why yeah. they sound so angry? Because yeah. everyone else is constrained from saying child rape is wrong. Yeah, so it was the it was the sacrament of the confessional. That was the the yeah. phrase that I was um, not remembering. Oh yeah, no. yeah. We actually had somebody um, in one of the episodes that we did when we talked about that. We had somebody down in the comments was like, obviously didn't listen to our entire conversation because they thought that the law was about imposing. Um, it was, was imposing a law saying if, you know, you have to come forward no matter what if you learn about this. And no, there's already a moral obligation to come forward when yeah. another priest confesses to you yeah. Yeah. that he is, you know, raped a child. The law was just saying, hey, if you get caught... Um, you know, covering for this person, there will be consequences. There's already a, you know, a moral obligation. We are just adding a legal obligation that only takes effect if you are found out to be harboring this criminal. Yeah. And that, that person didn't good. seem to get that because they must not have listened to the whole thing. Yeah. And I, I, right. I mean, I even said, I acknowledge that this is a completely toothless, basically feel-good law. And, you know, yeah. And it actually didn't even pass, so. It, mm. Well, so it's non-passage made Disgusting. some people feel good, so. Absolutely shameful. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know how many, uh, what, what reach uh, Catholic Answers Live reaches, but, I mean. I mean, well, it's not the, it's certainly not the only uh, Catholic radio show. Do you know where it's based? I, d I do not. Yeah. There's one here in town as well, I think. This is just there's a bunch of religious but yeah, radio I mean, these, everywhere. These are the kinds yeah. of um, apologetics that are being trotted out. Mm. Is the victims don't matter as much as saving souls in the long run, you know? Right. And so we just need to hunker down mm. and we need to ride the storm out. That's kind of what I got from that. I don't know if you guys had a different takeaway. No, yeah. Mm. Pretty much. No, I mean you're saying, sorry, you're saying that the, the, the takeaway is that victims should or that? Uh, the church in general and uh, Catholics in general. 
Yeah, and probably. The, 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 the sanctity of the confessional booth is more important than victims seeing justice. Yeah. Yeah, that's... For, for, yeah. for the, the teachings of God's church on earth. By their words and actions, that's what they're up to. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Words as well. If that's their primary concern <laughs> and it trumps other ones, then yeah, by their words. Yeah. So on that rosy note, um, I was going to say, <laughs> isn't it my job to bring things down? I thought yeah. it was. The... I've been doing a good job of that tonight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do we want to move on to? Dealer's choice. Let's see. Mm. Do we want to do demonic power? You ready sure. for some demonic power? We can do that. Brace yourself. D- oh demonic boy. power. Okay. It comes from his vocal Demonic words. power. Franklin Graham claims supernatural element behind attacks on Trump. So, Evan, Evan, evangelist Franklin Graham claimed the political turmoil fracturing the country in the wake of impeachment proceedings into President Trump likely has a supernatural origin because people can't troll. So He's got to. Yeah. Graham spoke Thursday with author and host Eric Metaxas, who asked the 67-year-old son of the late Billy Graham what he made of the present political situation. It's a very bizarre situation to be living in a country where some people seem to exist to undermine the president of the United States, Metaxas said. Uh, it's just on, a bizarre time for but, most Americans. So sorry. Wow. Really? I mean, <laughs> it's wow. been a, on, on, based on that. It's been a bizarre time for most Americans yeah. for more than 10 years. So weird that only just now Ugh. there are elements within <laughs> within the country that yeah, are wanting to undermine the president. Oh. Holy shit. Wow. I mean, that's never happened to a president before. No, there's never Wait ever been any. A minute. That's Racial brand new. slurs or, 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 brand new, yes. or, or, or claims or of... Just just the stated, no, we're going to oppose what the other party does. <laughs> is I'm flat a, out. I'm the, <laughs> yes. s- currently the Senate minority leader, and I'm going to uh, say this on the floor of the Senate. My name is Mitch. Yeah, yeah. Do you, right-wing also, evangelicals have like... Comrade the, Mitch, uh, yeah. Is it... Is it the uh, the goldfish that has the really short memory? Yeah, yeah. it kind of seems like memory. it. Mm-hmm. It's it's. I think it's. Uh, although I'm not sure that goldfish uh, uh, flip flop as much in or out of water mm-hmm. as the current Republican Party. Uh, I'm also certain that goldfish are incapable of hypocrisy. Yeah. Well, Graham Much responded... unlike the Republican Party today. Yeah, Graham responded. Well, I believe it's almost a demonic power that is trying. I would disagree, Metaxas interrupted and said, it's not almost demonic. You know and I know that at the heart, it's a spiritual battle. Graham agreed and laid out some of the economic success the country has seen under Trump. If you look at what the president, uh, just for our country, regardless of whether you're a Republican or Democrat, unemployment is the lowest in 70 years. More African Americans are working. More Latinos are working. More Asians are working. More everybody are working. Okay. We have an economy that is just screaming forward. It's incredible. Economic prosperity benefits churches, Graham said, because Christians have more money to tithe. Ooh. Did he say that out loud? Apparently he said that out loud. That's a bad note to end on. I mean, well, so, again, if your entire ideology is things that are good for the church are good, then saying you doing better is also good for the thing that, you know, it just sounds absolutely bad to everyone not in the pews, Mm -hmm. Uh, even people in the pews next door oftentimes find that and prosperity gospels of Jesus. Do they not get that there are, they they know when they're talking about culture war that there are aspects of culture that people care about when it comes to politics. And if they're winning the culture war and restoring all of that, how do they not understand that people are upset because they don't want that to happen? They're just like, well, it must be demons because everybody's rich. <laughs> right. I, w- I, then uh, why do you care about whatever it was, Sesame Street or Arthur or whatever, where they had a same-sex wedding? You're rich. Yep. Shut up. Like, if, if, that's, if that's your argument is, oh, you must be possessed by demons because you care about something other than money, then this entire time when you've been caring about things other than money, what... Uh, 
Okay. Oh no, we're possessed yep. by angels. So we're I've got on the a right few side. things to say. Please do. Don't let me rant the whole episode. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try. So, uh, hang on, don't. Uh, you already threw it on the floor. Oh no, but, go ahead. Go ahead. I can so, pick it up. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> we 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 live in what um, has been referred to as a gig economy. Mm, yeah. And they alluded to early earlier in uh, they, they may not have had that exact quote, but they said in a different part because I watched the entire um, interview. Yeah. The guy said, "Oh no, we were the the economy was a complete wreck three years ago. No one can deny that. That's what just a the fact." Hell? And, no, and Trump fixed everything. Uh, bullshit. Yeah. Okay, that is not a fact. Yes. We had <sighs> things weren't. You know, it, it wasn't. Their own it facts. wasn't. It wasn't a utopia, but we had good, steady growth. Any, yeah. on a, any honest uh, economist will, you know, acknowledge that. And any honest e- econ- aha, economist will also acknowledge that a strong stock market does is not indicative of a better life for regular people. Yeah, That's right. Bullshit. Well, purport the. We, there was, we have more people working part time. We have more people working um, jobs that are just apps on their phone. So the yeah. the higher employment numbers don't necessarily mean anything in terms of you know people having a better life or making any more money necessarily. Yeah, life yeah. fucking sucks for most people. It does. Yeah, they but they're working worse every day. They don't have more, more money to tie every day. In. It's everyone's working and the markets are doing well. Therefore, things are good. And I was like, well, <sighs> that's, a, that's a relatively good indication for uh, non-human entities that we call legal corporations in this country. Right. Yeah, for the tiny handful of people who are either um, extremely heavily invested and know how to navigate that world. Uh, it's good for know, the 1%. Adeptly. Mm. Yeah, that's good news for them. But... For the overwhelming majority of us, things aren't going well. No. We're working multiple jobs. Yep. A higher employment number is not indicative of anything that you want to say it is, necessarily. Right. Mm -hmm. How are wages doing? (laughs) Yeah. Well, even then, you know, um, you got got, uh, companies like Amazon um, raising wages but also cutting hours. Yep. So then... They can say, oh, yeah, everybody's got a $15 paycheck, right. uh, an hour paycheck, but we cut hours and now, because it's all about the bottom line and we have absolutely no oversight regulating us, right. that, is, you know, that has the yeah. best, uh, you know, the, the people's best interest at heart. So, and, and then, yeah, they don't yep. have any real benefits because they're only working 30 some odd hours a week. This whole thing... It, there's so much wrong with yes. this interview, and it's it's kind of hard. It's a bit of a gish gallop, and it's hard to kind of break it all down. Yeah. And I've forgotten most of it because I've gone on my rant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just – it's just – they're provided – the emotional reasoning with these ones is very strong. Mm-hmm. The, their their religion gives them a framework through which to see the world and to feel about things. And then they do that with gusto. They're rewarded with control of billions of dollars and payment in millions of dollars to continue to do that. Yeah. Like, and this is a very, yeah. very interesting country. Because yeah. uh, I'll be honest, you know, Cardi B makes millions of dollars, but Cardi B doesn't impose the same level of suffering as <laughs> religious institutions. Hers, I think, is at a reasonable level of suffering imposed upon the rest of us. The, right. uh, now nah, it's just a cheap jab, but it's cool. sort of, it's just sort of fascinating, right? Like in the in the old days when you had robber barons. They ran large companies, at least, yeah. right? So, sure, they went around and they... I'm about to say, wow, this has led me to a weird place because I was about to say the sentence. Sure, they they broke unions, but, I mean, they did some shit, right? Yeah. But we have railroads across the country, right? The, yeah. These guys... What? For what? 
Yeah. Spiritual just warfare. Burning stuff down. Who cares? Yeah. yeah. I, I also want to mention how incredibly infantilely lazy the, the just the, the mentality of if they're against us, well, obviously demonic possession. Mm -hmm. It's so lazy. Yeah. It's the equivalent of, oh, she wouldn't go out with me. She's obviously a lesbian. Jesus edition. You know? Yeah. Yep. I mean... Irresponsible is as irresponsible does. Yeah. If, if they're not <laughs> foolish, they don't as agree foolish with says. me. If they don't agree with me, if they don't toe the same line as me, then they're the demonically possessed. Yeah. There yeah. is no middle ground. There no. is no nuance. None. They're not for us. They're against us. Yeah. Demons. The end. Demons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty pathetic. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> oh, God. Oh, but religion has such a positive influence on the world. <laughs> oh, but it's no. so good. It Everyone distorts is everything. Singing sometimes. Mm. No, 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 no. Yeah, it, it really does. It's, it's in those moments, like that pause, where it's just sort of like, what is the next thing you can say? When, yeah. About the sarcastic, oh, but religion does such a positive thing in the world. You know, like religious institutions lobbying for capital punishment for uh, LGBTQ individuals overseas and doing so successfully, I might add. Uh, no, no, no. Look at the pretty buildings. Stained glass is an yeah, interesting art. There you form. go. Maybe put something <laughs> in a stained glass window other than Jesus, and I'll spend more time on it. Mm. Yeah. See, that yep. makes up for all the evil. It is really interesting because it would be easy to spin a counter-narrative about the modern church in religious terms. So you could go back to the schism and just basically say that is when the seed of modern corruption was planted because it's when the Western church decided that uh, the, uh, you know, uh, Idolatric? Wow, what is the adjective for idolatry? Idolatrous? Idolatrous, thank you. Wow. Um, <laughs> that was it not that easy. I, I am the one helping well, you I, with words. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll contemplate this at the end of this quasi rant yeah. I'm trying to build. But the... <laughs> That, that idolatrous images, okay, well, you know, no, no, it's okay. You can have uh, pictures and you can have uh, statues. You can have uh, images and look at these large churches and you can have all of this. Um, it would be easy for, you know, I could, I went to uh, uh, St. Francis Middle School where St. Francis was this super holy figure because he took all of his possessions, sold uh, gave them away and then begged for money so that he could buy cobblestones so that he could build a church on a mountain and spread the word of God that way as an example of complete and utter self-sacrifice. Wow. Right? Uh, and it wasn't about things that were expensive and it wasn't about things that were shiny and pretty and you could weave that into a large narrative about how the United States basically either, depending on how you define it, invented celebrity culture or amplified it, how you can say, oh, the business of America is, is business as much as you want, but in this day and age, the business of America is show business, that it's all about shiny things, pretty pictures, happy noises, and giving 10% of your income to a person that very clearly doesn't need it. How is this anything like stories that I was told as a child about what the church is supposed to do? Right. It's not. And then you, you, you preach that, you know, but you believe they it. They were supposed to be good guys. I don't, but yeah, yeah. Honestly, I like bad out. guys. Yeah, well, there was a lot of Jesus in there. I mean, I'm sure that, I'm sure that a large portion of the audience of the non-profits uh, zoned out when I was like, well, why, don't, why isn't there a Christian movement arguing this? Um, which is basically my question. Because it, it, it's because the people that look back for, ooh, what are the basis of my religion? What is, the, what is the history of it? Let me draw spiritual wisdom there, end up in fundamentalist churches talking about how the gays need to die. Mm. Their right. words, although they would probably use stronger words than that even. In any case. Yeah, mm. let's, uh, let's move away let's from Let's go ranks. ahead and jump into an yeah. email, shall we? Sure. Yes. Well, let's see. All right. This one was from our friend Chuck. Hey, Chuck. What's uh, up? Since thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor seems to forbid lying only about others, 
I assume that God is fine with me misrepresenting myself. This seems to be supported by the be fruitful and multiply instruction since the human race would go extinct if men couldn't lie about themselves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's <the same>. it's <laughs> Oh I, yes, I we, guess it would be you know you can lie about yourself by default. Yes, we are we are easy to deceive about ourselves. <laughs> uh, as long as you lie to yourself first, then it's a no, no. Jesus uh, Christ! I think we're gonna get some more email about that. Some of which will be unreadable on air. Um, yeah, it's interesting because there's a, a, a translation of the first portion of the. 619 uh, laws mm-hmm. that often t- t- 10, only 10 right. um, where the grammar is unclear because there wasn't punctuation or indentation so it's sort of uh, the the commandments against uh, killing and stealing and coveting mm-hmm. and lying the, the grammar and I think many scholars argue and point out that in Hebrew it would be do not steal from, kill covet the things of or lie to your neighbor, right? As like one concept that gets broken into multiple rules, but apply right. to sure. your neighbor, your fellow uh, Israelites, mm-hmm. your fellow Hebrews. I forget which word it would be at the time. Okay. Um, and so, no, 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 it's okay to lie to them. They're not Jews like you and me <laughs> is, is, is the, I mean, again, a very poor way of phrasing that. But yeah, it's also not, don't lie about yourself. It's like don't lie to other right. people in the in group. Although back in the day, you didn't really travel through large urban cities of multicultural exposure, right. so you didn't really bump into only, you know the village yeah. next door unless you actually only in like there. the big coastal cities and stuff. Mm. yeah, where there were merchants and bazaars yeah. and yeah, it's mm. interesting. <sighs> It's certainly a very literal, lawyerly reading of mm-hmm. some of this. Um, I would say be honest with the people that you're interested in dating, I guess. I, I'm not don't sure where take I take dating it. advice from the Bible. Don't, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. I think that is the, the, the lesson here. Um, There's my quote. Don't take dating advice from the Bible. Yeah, good one. <laughs> that is a it's very good. Don't take advice from the Bible. Generally, just well, get there. I was gonna say that doesn't mean take whatever the opposite of advice is from the Bible. It just means search for a different source for advice. There's lots of lots of ways of figuring out what you should or shouldn't do, and mm. the Bible ain't great. So there's that. Do you, yeah. uh, Dennis? Did you have a question, or are we going on to the next? I'll go on to the next. The next story is that me? Yeah. That is you. All right. It's a study, but there are far fewer statistics than I'm used to Mm. throwing up. So jump in here when you guys have something to say. But uh, new psychology research indicates that subtle exposure to religious words can increase in quotation, well, I'm adding the quotes that I'm adding right now, benevolent sexism. Benevolent sexism? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, no. Uh, Uh, I've been uh, thinking of interesting oxymorons all week, actually. Um, (laughs) This feels like um, internet nice guy-ism. Yeah, Yeah, I I guess. Yeah. Jesus edition. I I feel like that is actually probably the the closest thing that I can come up with. Internet, yeah. Internet nice guy-ism is what it really leads to. Yeah. Although, not always on the internet, much to the dismay of the everyone who has to live their life in, okay. you know, but, AFK. I mean, but right. A lot of people know that. that, that, that no, 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 that meme. I was, I, was, I was adding yeah. on to it rather than trying to contradict you. So, previous research in the area had found uh, that subliminal religious priming is associated with increased racial prejudice in U.S. undergrad samples. Mm-hmm. Um, but they went on to their... Uh, from there and said, well, okay, well, what impact does this have on attitudes about women, right? So brief exposure to Judeo, in their words, Judeo-Christian, even though that's a nonsense phrase. Didn't you have a thing about that that you, Ra- you spoke racial to? No, no, Judeo-Christian. Oh, yeah, You spoke no. to the Texas Board of Education about that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, it's a nonsense 
It's, do you, do it you sounds, want to dive into that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Because um, I'd actually like to hear that again. Yeah, yeah. So right after, you know, uh, Europe had done its whole Hitler thing, um, trying to unify the United States in a, like, <laughs> white, white bread Christian yay, saying our Western Christian tradition sounded a little bit ominous to, you know, the... Uh, minority Jewish population in the country and mm-hmm. at the time, you know, the Protestant Christian majority in our country didn't really have malicious feelings as far as I can tell, for the most part, doesn't now. Um, and so they went, well, okay, Judeo-Christian. Right. Right? And it's a much nicer way. I forget where the first usage of it, I think the first president to use the phrase was Eisenhower, but it's a it's an idea that, well, we're not Nazis, but we're just... Western Christian civilization. It's kind of like rebranding neo-Nazi to alt-right. A little bit. Yeah, Mm. yeah. I mean, well, so I I would say that it's 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 not like it's not like they were actually Nazis. Is that a little bit too crass of a uh, you know? No, no, no. It's just it's like certainly uh, emotive. It's it's certainly emotive. I feel like the the way in which that analogy could be stronger. It's a good one. Mm. But the way in which that analogy could be stronger is if it didn't suggest as much maliciousness on behalf of the people doing the rebranding. So okay. it would be like 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 right. in in Austin there's the Austin Tennis Center that added pickleball courts and wanted to call itself that drew some lines on some of its tennis courts to allow people to play pickleball, the greatest sport ever invented. And then it sort of went, okay, we're the Austin Tennis and Pickleball Center. But it didn't change the name of its website. It certainly didn't refile its taxes or whatever. It just went, oh, well, here's a nice thing so that you can feel included, right? It's like um, it's like a, a co-ed uh, fraternity saying, oh, well, we won't call every member brother. We'll call every member brother and sister or right. something. Although the... The gender inclusive fraternity that I was a member of—I guess I'm still a brother of—just uses the same word for everyone. It's—it's it's, they changed nothing about what they believe or practice, but added Judeo to sound kind of cool. <laughs> uh, We're inclusive. Okay. See, I'm not going to derail it's, us by asking you to explain what pickleball is, but I want to know later. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll explain okay. the greatest game of all time to you later. <laughs> Or the, the the it's a it's American, so it wins by <laughs> default. Um, no, no, but it's like um, what is it? It's Kent Hovind has his kid Minnie Hovind who wears a beanie. Which which is it that has the father son duo? That's wow, whatever. I don't know. It's like that, where it's like, oh look, Eric he's got Hovind. A, Eric Hovind. Yeah. It's, oh, he's got a hat. It's different. No, he's not. It, 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 they're Christian religious words, right? Although to be fair, when you touch on, well, no. Because if you're using an English translation and you're using not, like, the Jewish translation of it, because there mm-hmm. is one of those, because not all translate, hashtag not all translations are the same. Um, yeah, no, it's decidedly just Christian. Additionally, it's a topic touched on heavily and successfully and with more research and citations in uh, a book that I like called Founding Myth uh, by Andrew Seidel, that you should... Uh, purchase and also he's getting quite good at tweeting, so you should follow him on Twitter. Hmm. So, uh, short answer: Judeo Christian is a nonsense. Yeah, uh, it's 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 when you want to talk about stuff as a nation and important and in politics. Yeah, so it, it's, it's a right. nonsense word that was yeah. coined to soften basically kind of a Christian yeah. nationalistic. Yeah, they wanted of. to sound like they didn't hate Jews and. Uh, most of them didn't. You shouldn't. So, yeah, and yeah. you shouldn't. I mean, you can, you can, I, hate is bad, but if you get annoyed <laughs> at an individual, it doesn't matter what groups they belong to, you can get annoyed at an individual, whether uh, they're Christian or not. I guess with that out of the way. With uh, that out of the way, yeah. let's get to the, t- <laughs> the topic of the thing that I started ages ago. All right. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, brief exposure to <laughs> Christian religious words can increase the endorsement of sexist attitudes among both men and women, uh, according to hmm. a new study pu- published in the Journal of Psychology of Religion, I'm sorry, in the journal Psychology of Religion and Spirituality. So a little bit of background on this study. It was conducted with samples in the United States and in Belgium, both countries with 
a very specific religious background. So they didn't Belgium. test words from Judeo-Christian <laughs> words in Saudi Arabia to see what effect they would have. I want to apologize to Belgium for this. Being subjected to Exposure, Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I mean, hey, look, they're implicated too in the study of whatever, although it's not really implicated, it's just sort of how your mind works when you're inculcated in a mm. uh, culture heavily influenced by interesting ideas about being sexist and that being okay. Mm. So, um, the many uh, Ju uh, Judeo-Christian denominations and groups still practice and preach different and unequal roles for men and women. Uh, some of them, this is my editorializing, say different roles but were equally yoked, which is not at all horrifying. Equally yoked? Yes, because you work for right. God as his slave child or something. Um, equally yoked, but women are property and they're not allowed to yeah. speak or teach anything. No, no, but it's, it's all benevolent. We have all the same old uh. rules, except your, your father will never refuse to give you away to your husband at your wedding. And your mother will agree with him verbally. Okay. Equality. Yeah. Both yeah. you and, uh, both your father and your mother own you as property. <sighs> You know, not, that, not only do you have to wed your rapist, your rapist has to wed you. Has yes, to wed it's you. equal. They bo right. you both have to get married Ugh. to each other. <laughs> See, shotgun weddings are fair. Yeah. Neither of you want to get married. Um, the, <laughs> There's two sides to every issue. <laughs> yes, and, <laughs> and both of them are heads in favor of me. They're all equal. So, uh, <laughs> different and unequal roles for men and women, both within the uh, religious organization and outside of it. So this research examines how brief activation of Junio Christian concepts, both above and below people's awareness, influences their endorsement of sexist beliefs. So it goes on to da, 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 talk about the specific way in which these ideas were primed, which involved like, okay, unscramble these, unscramble the words in this sentence, mm -hmm. and the sentence, you know, contains words like angel and God and other right. um, uh, religious. And then they were asked uh, whether or not they uh, uh, were tested whether or not they were more likely to agree with statements such as, quote, women should be cherish cherished and protected by men, which if you were going to try and find anything that could fit into a category that could be named benevolent sexism, which again, you've got quite a ways to demonstrate that that's a correct labeling of that. Um, oh yeah, no, women are this special thing. Uh, they're little porcelain humans to yeah. be protected. You know, that's better than... Uh, yeah, whatever. Well, that, uh, that's better than but, the idea that they're actually equal and that they can also be garbage people. Yeah. Just like us men. Yeah. You know, it's, that, hey, wow. It is 2019. It is less Women flowery, can be trash yeah. too. It um, is less flowery language. And it ignores the idea that, well, everybody should protect <laughs> everyone else. Yeah, I mean, but, it, but yeah. like... It, the, the implications of the sentence are, are clear. Yes, they yeah. clearly are. And what's interesting is that it, the, it, this occurred with men and women and believers and non-believers oh, wow. as well. Right? Right. So watch out. Yeah. Uh, religion will get everyone to be They'll distort worse. your perceptions just by using their mm. terminology. Yeah. So the, there were a couple of ways that they prime letters. Mostly they were um, just exposed uh, in large part to written words that are, are yeah. familiar to them given that they're wow. from the United States or Belgium. So they're familiar with this Jesus person despite what a Christian film uh, might think non-believers <laughs> uh, know about their savior or whatever. That's right. Um, but we uh, haven't heard the good news. So yeah. uh, 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 Mr. Haggard... Uh, I actually don't know whether he's a doctor, but told uh, Psypost, small, even unnoticed exposure to religious words, especially those associated with supernatural beings like <laughs> God and angel, may alter your feelings towards women briefly, regardless of your gender or belief 
in God. That is so, weird. So, I mean, I'm going to I'm going to jokingly say here, yeah, but who doesn't want to be protected Wait, by Castillo? That did say so. briefly <laughs> though. <laughs> it's it said briefly, right? I mean, you can say he that He rocks that trench You can though. say that about damn near anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I mean, well, listening I, to a, you know, a certain type of song can briefly change your attitudes about this or that. Mm-hmm. Well, I was going to say, so I'm glad that you brought that up because everything that you do every day affects your psychology uh, and it stays with you. So when you hang out with uh, uh, sexist people or, or constantly uh, inculcate yourself in a, in a culture, particularly casually, particularly if you're not paying attention, it influences you, right? It's like... Um, there's studies that show, you know, a, a person who uh, favors environmental protections, who then joins um, a, a group that lobbies on behalf, over time, their positions on, on that issue will uh, become more uh, radical, I suppose. Well, uh, maybe uh, not, the, not necessarily right radical, but, but some well, well, I think. No, no, no. The, the, their, their positions will drift it in... in for favor of that. I mean, hmm. I'm trying to find a word other than radical because I don't mean uh, that, you know, they're going to blow up someone's car. I just mean they will become more assertive and assert more on that position. Yeah. Their, so their feelings on specific parts right. of those yeah. policies will be stronger and go further. These things can change your, well, can change your perception temporarily unless you're experiencing them all the time, in which case it's no longer temporary. Yeah. You're now permanently mm-hmm. uh, sexually benevolent, <laughs> as in you see, if you're a guy, you're more likely to see women as objects that are to be, you know, supposedly uh, cherished and yeah. protected. Protected. Right. But not as, they're not necessarily seen as equals. No, no, and I liked what you said about you know oh they're, oh they're this porcelain doll that needs to be kind of mm-hmm. uh, you know, tucked away, and they're not really allowed to think for themselves all that much, and and that's where the quote ends, so that you can first. be sound bitten with the. <laughs> I like when you said that, and then you. <laughs> that is that. I, thank you. I do think that that describes sort of what they're talking about in terms of this particular manifestation of sexism, or the idea that like oh the class of people that are women. Um, uh, you know, are are dainty, and we men should decide what uh, to do about it. And you know, and yeah, when we do, they'll swoon and fall into our arms or whatever. It, yeah, and it goes <laughs> the other way, and it, it it kind of it cements the a lot of the binary uh, gender stereotypical norms that have been mm. uh, you know so firmly cemented into the culture for you know, generations and generations. And we know that though that's that, that doesn't reflect how people feel. How people uh, it act. doesn't it doesn't reflect humanity well as it actually is. Is there could it be the leftovers from an age where you know the Stone Age where if all the women in your tribe are killed, your tribe dies. But if all the men are killed, it may still, most of the men are killed, it may still survive. Well, so you protect the women because they're the ones that can keep the tribe going. Yeah, it's, our, so, it's archaic, you know, old world thinking. Yeah, so that specific example, uh, men Redundant. are capable of fathering children. And if you're, ne- yeah, never but mind. not without women. Say, yeah, well, yes, <laughs> but if you're going back to old old tribes, then the 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 time honored a horrifying tradition is you just go take the next take tribe. the next tribe's and women, then you kill all yeah. their men, and mm-hmm. then you, yeah, you know, like it's described and instructed in the Bible by yes. the God of the Bible. Um, yeah, which again, yeah, there's a book th- to recommend describes that, women as property and yeah, yeah, doesn't allow them to. Think or teach yeah, it's or, yeah. it's it's not addressed specifically in every book because it's just assumed. It's just described in that way. There's like mm-hmm. five female characters in the Bible that do anything. Like, yeah, I have an issue with this benevolent phrasing that they use because I, I feel mm-hmm. like it's, it's really disingenuous. They are trying desperately to paint a better. 
face on this, and... Yeah, it certainly comes across that way. I mean, yeah. Upon further inspection, yeah, it's pretty obvious, but to a casual reader... Oh, uh, that's, oh, yeah. That's going to be, oh, mm, that oh, being religious... Of course. Makes we're more moral. moral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes you benevolent, yeah. yeah it's benevolent a, is I'm a only, good word. Even I, hearing godly words makes you better. Yeah, I'm not a professional. I'm only a casual racist. Yeah. That's fine. Because <laughs> yeah. um, it's the word of God moving through you. Through you that yeah. says, woman, make me a sandwich. And oh, out the other gosh. end, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I made Kevin lose it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> sexism exists and you can't deal with it. Neener, neener, neener. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. His, his face is changing color. Um, oh, my God. All right, That's here, probably here. just wow. scotch. <laughs> uh, so a little bit. So it's, it's interesting because it, it noted that the study only examined samples in two countries that have relatively low rates of both kinds of sexism, hostile and benevolent, as well as ones with majority Christian influence on culture. <laughs> Um, therefore, more work should be done to examine how religious priming impacts those living in countries with higher rates of sexism or with different majority belief systems, such as Islam or Hinduism. Yeah, it will be really interesting because, for particularly Hinduism, because there's such almost diversity of practice and mm. the vast, I think it's the vast majority of people that practice Hinduism are in India. Um, because it didn't have that whole go out and make everyone a Hindu uh, kick that all the Abraham, well, that two-thirds of the Abrahamic, major Abrahamic traditions had, uh, have. But it also has, like, a really horrifying culture with sexism and cults. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll be honest, you know, I haven't checked in on the sexism rates now, in India. Here's but a, they were having a real gang rape problem yeah. a couple years back. Here's a weird thing. Uh... It, it it affects me in that, you know, when you hear about stories of, say, the Titanic, mm -hmm. and it was all women and children first, mm -hmm. and when men got in the boat, they had to deal with a certain amount of, uh, uh, you know... Children. A, 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 accusations of cowardice and, and, and stuff like that. And sure, sure. the problem is, I mean, I feel... Yeah, that's the that was the women and children first. That's the right thing to do. That's I, I that's my that's my gut instinct. But I so uh, well, am I am I, I I'm a part of it. I guess uh, kind those, of. those 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 uh, uh, teachings have filtered into my brain over the years. So it's well, that's, Yeah, and I'm not sure that I can say that that was a bad thing necessarily. Yeah, I'm glad I, you I brought can't that either. Up. So mm. I, 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 th huh? I think as a side note, I'm actually not sure how factual that specific example was. However, the point you're making, which is that a culture that says, oh, it's the duty of everyone to protect, I mean, in this case, children as well, mm -hmm. but these fragile, this fragile porcelain yeah. half of the population creates, again, a separate and not equivalent or equal role for men. Basically, societies that have specific gender roles oh. and enforce them are not good for the people in those societies, right. regardless of gender. They don't affect everyone the same because they literally say, we're going to treat you two differently. But it benefits no one. And even if it was like, oh, okay, cool, uh, you're not directly negatively impacted by this, you know, oh, you didn't get married, well, then you have no obligations to your wife or children. Yeah. Cool, great. I would still live in a society where people are treated unequally. Oh, wow. My brain's going even further down the rabbit hole. Yeah, I feel like um, defending it would be almost like a Phyllis Schlafly kind of argument, you know. Uh, well, when I, when I think of... You know, uh, cruelty to animals. Mm. I think it, you know the thing that 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 informs me that that it's wrong is that we created the dogs and the cats. We bred them. We we made them what they are, and thus we are responsible for them. Okay, but sure. the thing is, the men in these cultures they forced. The women to be a certain way, they did. They forced yeah, yeah. them into this this porcelain 
role and then and then yeah you 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 it's women and children first to the lifeboats because we created them, and so we are responsible for them, and so we will sacrifice ourselves for their betterment or something. It's well, just so, weird and twisted. So I think, I think I might be striking at the, <clears throat> the heart of what you're saying is I, I don't think that you're saying, well, wouldn't it be better if society were that way? What I think you're saying is in a society that is set up that way uh-huh. for uh, uh, men to ignore the – obligations to women Mm -hmm. while expecting women to have obligations to them would be deeply, you know, unjust and unfair. Well, it's like they determine. Yeah. yeah, The men determine the obligations and the things like that. And it's just not, it's one-sided. Yeah. And that's wrong. But the, the, I, I can't, I can't, you know, deny a, a, you know, chord in me that responds to that and goes, oh, yeah, it's the right thing to do. And well, I just go, oh. We, it's you're... hard not to break this down in a binary way. Right. Which well, yeah, is, I think, the, what we've been kind of doing the past couple of minutes. Yeah, I mean, let's at least take a moment to recognize that uh, not all women are born the same or <laughs> born <laughs> in the same bodies. They uh, are all identical. <laughs> not, and, no. and not everyone is a man or a woman, but uh, the... Granted. Yeah. yeah, and it, it, in part, I see actually that as just a response to you can't tell me what to be and your mm-hmm. weird boxes don't appeal to me <laughs> oh, and I don't want to no. fit in either of them and I don't have to be there, <sighs> uh, which I'm in favor of. I'm in favor of a society that allows people to define who they are as individuals on their own terms, right. whether those terms are male and female or, you know, normal right. or giraffe person, which has nothing specifically to do with giraffes, but just has to do with being uh, better because giraffes are the best animal. Okay. So, I just had a horrible, you know. horrible thought. Um, <laughs> what is... I, I don't know if I want to like, bite. No, you, there's you, like, you like don't Spider-Man. Want... Like Spider-Man where you gain all of the strength okay. and power of a spider. From if we spider had the bite. Titanic now... Would the order of who goes to the lifeboats be in the order of LGBTQ? <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, giraffe people first. No. Giraffe people first. Yes, that's yes. it's, it's the will, unspoken that's the first. Hill. Oh. That's the hill I will die on. <laughs> okay. Thank you. First. Thank you for joining me on the awesome. hill of justice and reason. Um, the hill of giraffes. I learned, sorry, over Thanksgiving, giraffe. this was fun, Bo- that a group of giraffes just... Uh, Hanging around mm-hmm. is a tower of giraffes. Oh, but if a, cool! But if a group of giraffes is moving, it's a journey of giraffes. I really yes, different oh. a, a behaviorally a behavioral based different group, group name. name. What's it called? Collective collective, collective term yeah. based on behavior. How bizarre! I think, I think there are That's those cool. for many more animals than people realize because those mm-hmm. names are were used when you were hunting. So it's uh-huh. like oh, there's. I see a tower of giraffes is different than I see a journey of giraffes. Right. Because you then just ask which direction is it moving rather than is it moving wow. which way. Mm, that's um, cool. Okay. But there's actually, you said something very interesting that I think mm-hmm. we have uh, d- just enough time to touch on, which is you see your, uh, uh, our obligation to care for, for example, domestic cats and, and domestic dogs yes, as those... the result that, in your words, we created that. Yeah, we cr- we so, we forced them into a role or a or a mold. Yeah. Okay. So I I very much understand that, and I I just want to touch on the the fact that you're you're assigning a moral collective duty on mm. a species. Yeah, I don't even uh, I yeah. don't think that's right, but uh, well, but, yes, but that is the that the is what basis. I'm doing. Yes, yeah. Yeah. the that's inclination. Exactly what I'm doing. I don't know of. if that's a proper yeah. thing to do or not. But, but it's sort of like, I'm can you? It hold yourself responsible for the actions of literally uh, generations of humans going back 10,000 years, which is, I think, when d- uh, the domestication of dogs for s- uh, something like that. I forget specifically what that point is. I have to. Uh, I mean... Uh, well, that's just because uh, dogs uh, are uh, cute, uh, think but of you it, don't... You know, I, I have to kind of think of it as a, a, a species responsibility to another species rather than an individual's responsibility to an individual. Yeah. 
Okay. That's... I mean... Yeah, that's I, where I'm coming from. It's weird. I tend to fall into lines of thinking that are similar to that. However, the, the, the idea that obligations can be passed from generation to generation. I know. Mm. Uh, I know. It's weird and it's a, it's a, it's a slippery slope. It, it is. I feel, like, I feel like it's significant when you have the right grouping. And then it's like, okay, can you mm. only pass... I mean, if you are passing rights and obligations from generation to generation, mm-hmm. then you find a moral justification for a hereditary uh, aristocr- aristocracy. Because, okay, yeah. well, the obligation to make things better is passed from generation to generation. Right, The obligation right. to serve the lords is passed from generation to generation. And so how do you... Um, Anyway, yeah. You appeal to. Oh man! If I could, the just, recipe for, for if I could just uplift dogs and cats to you know <laughs> human yeah. level intelligence and stuff, and then say, well, okay, now you're on your own. That, that, I was that say, would be well, awesome. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> would you be able to? Because th- that probably that, not. That actually would create a lot of very interesting and weird. Oh, it would create a lot. social it would be a, challenges. A, yeah. a, a yeah. can of worms has nothing. Yeah. On that. Yes. I was gonna say. It would be well, interesting to, to, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I think the problem that I'm having primarily is it is so, it's, a, it's such a binary kind of line of thinking that doesn't reflect uh, how humans identify in the real world. Mm-hmm. And this yeah. is just more and more perpetuating of that kind of binary thought. Yeah, mm. and well, it it, it it's complicated, and it is very difficult to try and break down an answer because people are complicated beings, you know. And it's difficult to break them down. Yeah. So I mean, I don't. Again, yeah. I I feel um, well, I'm annoyed by the overly flowery language that they use here. Oh, they but the oh, use yeah. of the word benevolent. Yeah, you know, feel like feels deceptive. I feel like. Uh, a second degree would be a, a better phrase because yeah. there's first degree sexism and second degree sexism. I feel like you could start classing things that way. Mm. I feel like the the borrowing of uh, criminal language might be better than yeah benevolent. So I mean, taking it back to the whole Titanic thing, it, when we when we actually like <laughs> reflecting how humans really are and we're very complex and yeah. we are equals, you know? Right. It, how do you break that up? Yeah, how well, you, thinking the way I'm thinking, who gets, I, I realize... gets to the life raft? Is yeah. it just whoever got there first? Yeah. I, I mean, realize that my yes. thinking is condescending. Mm. And, Benevolent and, sexism. Yeah, is it's, what they would it's, say. it's you know mm-hmm. a a sense of superiority which is completely undeserved. Well, it's, yeah, but, it's, but it's there, and I I, I, yeah. I I can only watch for it because it's a part of me. Yeah, and, and try to. It's well, a form of sexism to deal with that it, you but, don't. It, there's no ill will attached to it. I hope not. But you know, I, the, I mean, I'll, I'll take you at your word because you know. Yeah, you seem genuine. I, 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 I know that you're a good person. I'm 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 trying to be self-effacing here. Yeah. And go, yeah. Yes, my 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 feelings are not ideal, and if I could, yeah. you know, well, if I could edit my brain to fix that, I might do that. Yeah. I was gonna say, <laughs> I mean, there are, there are ways that we affect our own own thinking, um, and yeah, we can be aware of our own. We can be aware of our own failings. Yeah, and well, no, and we can affect and influence the way that we think to various degrees. Mm-hmm. And try to fix them as best I as think can. it would be yeah. interesting to point out that in the history of our species, there have been times when your particular view of uh, gender different when it, when it crops up, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, if I asked you now to, are, should men and women generally be treated equally by society? Have equal rights? Uh, equal positions, uh, have be able to purchase pants with pockets of the same size. Right. All of Obviously, these things. Obviously, yes. Yeah. Obviously, yes. Intellectually, um, yes. Heck, yeah. even even emotionally, yes. Yeah. And then, and then before we get into statistics and 
biology and whatever other random arguments an internet apologist for a second degree sexism would throw out. Um, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna stick with that. I like that phrase. I feel like it. I don't know. What do you think? People know I, what I mean on this particular show because I've explained it. I'm yeah. never going to be able to use this again. But in any case, uh, uh, d- disregarding random apologetics from second degree mm-hmm. uh, sexism um, apologists, there it is, I've got all the words correct and then the correct order, you would say that, yeah, no, sexism bad, equality good. Yes. I get a question. <laughs> Four legs good, two legs bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then um, if you if you kind of broke the trolley problem up in terms oh, of oh no in terms of is it better to kill one woman or five men yeah how do you break up the trolley pro- <laughs> oh. problem to accommodate uh, and show a difference in uh, possessing or not possessing benevolent sexism it's bizarre because in the case of like you know do you the kill, titanic again yeah. the, they'll go oh you spare the women and kill the men yeah, I mean, I, I it's guess. bizarre, but uh, and that is a bizarrely. Uh, there's a certain amount of condescension in that in that view. It's well, bizarre. Yeah. So if you're exposed <laughs> to more biblical yeah. type of thought, do you just by default decide, okay, well, obviously I'm going to uh, pull the lever and spare the one woman and kill the five men because I mean that's a woman. Obviously, yeah. Now I don't know is, is if that, that works with with is, with the Bible or Christianity and stuff. Is that, I don't know. What the, would that, that be the propensity, though? Yeah, I, I don't know. Say. Well, it's interesting because that suggests the next question, which is: Does the religion of the people on the tracks matter? Oh, is it better boy. to kill uh, one Christian or uh, uh, five oh. Hindus? And it reminds me, actually, of an interesting answer that uh, Tracy Harris gave, or an interesting uh, aspect of her upbringing that Tracy Harris described, which was she grew up thinking, like, okay, if someone is attacking me and trying to kill me, I shouldn't shouldn't kill them in self-defense because I don't know whether they're saved, and I know that I am. Wow. Oh! If I die, I know that I will go to heaven. But they might not. And so that lends the question, like, oh, it might be better... From a certain, from a born again view, to kill five <sighs> born again Christians than one, you know, devout Hindu. It kind of reveals some. They're of the, saved. They're done. Boom. It, Send them home to Jesus. Wow. It reveals some of the uh, the the interesting ways. Poisonous what a, human nature. life is. Yeah. Really, what a yeah. bizarre twisting of. Yeah, it's oh. like, oh, hey, you have all these considerations about what is morally correct based on society and existence. Well, guess what. A, a whole new spiritual existence gets added to that. Oh, throw Boom. it all out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, uh, it ain't there. So there's nothing to throw out. Oh. Yeah. I was going to say it's a bit like, no. I'm not gonna, That's I'm horrifying. Not gonna use that <laughs> this analogy. went a lot of different oh, wow. directions. Beliefs it's have really? consequences. Damn. What do you know? Who, who oh, knew? Oh, my goodness. They affect <sighs> what decisions you make and, and, what, and what your How views we- are going to be. Possibly we, trust them. Oh, well, man. I, 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 <laughs> I'm I've so just, glad just, we did this. I've, I've just oh. pictured, Dennis, I've just pictured the day when you meet like a, a fundamentalist Christian who has these beliefs, but when push comes to shove, they might, you know, make a little yeah, room yeah. And, and like, oh, okay, well, I guess I can kill one Hindu or whatever. Right, you know, right, like, right. Or, oh, people are equal based on their, I don't know why I picked Hindu specifically, but people, but you know. God. Sure, sure. And, and you'll then find yourself thinking, oh, well, I guess you're one of the good ones. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Then, <laughs> Which, <sighs> I, to yeah. specifically borrowing from oh, racist language. Must be a liberal. <laughs> yeah. It's going to say, oh, wow. to me, as much as people try and group themselves oh. and do successfully in terms of their thinking and ideology That's and organization, horrifying. they're still just an individual. You don't know what they believe until Damn. you see them act. All right. Well, I think we're running wow. up on the end of okay. time. Yeah, I, I think wanna... that's a good place to wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, hang on. Let me don't see. Don't be racist. First, don't be sexist. I have to... Even benevolently. So, so, I, uh, first, what? I have to tell you all, we'll be back in two weeks on the 15th of December. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And so, shall I take us out? Yes, you shall take us out. I shall take there. us out. Out All right. 
Well, we're done. We'll be back at some point to do it again. Bye. <laughs>